I thought I'd do a quick follow-up video. I'd be surprised if this got to be 10 minutes long, but I got more than a few questions on two subjects in particular. Accuracy and cutting steel. My camera was still in the garage covered in chips and I was fooling around with some steel so here goes nothing. I'll be cutting that rectangular pocket on the left in mild steel. The dog bone was my first test, not counting the sheet metal I did for the belt guard. But before I get into that, a quick comment about accuracy. I do plan to do accuracy and repeatability tests to figure out what this router is capable of. I mean, baseline resolution on paper is 1 thou. That's basically just 1.8 degree of the stepper motor per step on a 5 millimeter pitch lead screw. Now I am micro stepping with my drivers, but I'm not getting my hopes up. I mean, frankly, I bought the cheapest import bearings and screws I could find. Not to mention I have no idea what my spindle tolerances are. But when all is said and done, if I can hold 1 thou, I think I'll be happy. If I find I need more than that, well, I'll have to start slowly upgrading my core hardware. So I haven't done accuracy tests yet, as I'd like the machine to sort of settle in. And I even hesitate to share the measurements I'm about to because I'm not exactly sure what they mean. But it'll give you some idea of what's happening right out of the box, let's say. Mach 3 is currently set to theoretical numbers, basically what the math says they should be. And on a tape measure over two or three feet, it looks like I'm pretty close, but it still needs tuning, of course. I've only really played a bit with the x-axis, more out of curiosity. And we'll see the results of that in a minute with the discrepancy in the measurements between x and y in the pocket. But sooner or later, I'll take a closer look, sort out the axes best I can, and let you know then what I get. For now, I'm just having a bit of fun. Here it is in SOLIDWORKS. It's 40 by 30 by 5 millimeter deep in mild steel. I'm using HSM Express for the cam. It's too early to say, but it seems more stable than Fusion. Plus, I'm a SOLIDWORKS guy, so you know, old dog, new tricks. There are two toolpaths here, both adaptive, and they use a 6mm 4 flute carbide end mill. The first is to rough the bulk out, and the second is a cleanup pass. In hindsight, I should have made the second toolpath a pocket instead of adaptive, but live and learn. Now technically my spindle is too fast for cutting steel. Its minimum RPM is 7200. I have it set to 7500 because at 72, well, it, it's just too low on the power curve to move steel. And to be honest, it barely manages at 7500. I'm using G-Wizard to calculate my feeds and speeds, but we're still getting to know each other. I have steel selected and carbide for tooling, four flutes, and about an inch of stick out. It automatically calculated a cut depth of five millimeters at 7,500 RPM and 15 inches per minute. You might have noticed the deflection warning, but I wasn't too worried about two hundredths of a millimeter because my cut won't really be full size. Now I could have used a smaller end mill, maybe three millimeters, to get my RPMs into the, well, into a better range, but then I'd have a weaker cutter trying to push through steel. I'm also staying on the conservative side of G-Wizard's magic slider here. I actually ended up going just a little bit slower than that, and we'll see that in a minute. And as a matter of fact, I should probably just shut up and do some cutting. I'm doing my tests in some hot rolled steel, just some bar stock. I will admit that during the first dog bone test cut, the pucker factor was pretty high, but the router's actually keeping up pretty good. As you'll see, it moves quite a bit of steel. Uh, the pocket start to finish took maybe two minutes, two and a half minutes. I mean, I was impressed anyway. So this is real time. I do speed up some parts, but I think it should be obvious which is which. That obnoxious sound you hear is actually coming from two different places. First, my bar would have been better in a vise. It's making a real racket with just the two clamps on the end. Add to that the sheet metal shields on the machine, and well, the hearing protection came out pretty fast. I'll have to add a few more screws there. This is the finishing pass. 
both toolpaths will run at 70% of G-Wizard's recommendation. 70% just felt and sounded better at the machine. And as you can see, I'm at about 10 inches per minute, according to the mock display. That dog bone on the right is all pocket toolpath, done in I think about 60 thou step depths. The thought of plunging a 6mm mill that deep really had me nervous. You can see the adaptive is a bit more heavy handed and wall finish suffered. Totally my fault, but I'm learning. So the pocket in the X direction turned out essentially spot on. Maybe I got lucky on this one. But remember the X is the axis that I quote unquote tuned. Now this on the other hand came out a little bit blurry but the Y direction reads 29.77. Again the nominal was 30. So there's work to do on that Y axis. After getting that close I decided to do a quick axis calibration on both X and Y and cut the pocket again. I should have left well enough alone on X axis. As you'll see, I somehow managed to make things worse, but I'll show you the process here anyway. This process is identical for X, Y, and Z, but I'll show you the Y axis. I set up an indicator and brought the table towards me four millimeters. And as you can see, it didn't quite make it all the way to four. I input that measurement into Mach 3 and it updated the steps per unit for that axis. And then just to make sure, I checked it after the update. And as you can see, I'm a lot closer. From there, then, I sent Y the other direction back 4 millimeters. It doesn't quite make it back to zero, and that difference is the backlash in my Y screw. So I input that into Mach 3's backlash compensation and had at it again, but this time in a piece of cold rolled steel. I got tired of the spray bottle coolant and broke out my old airbrush for a real DIY coolant mister. Surprisingly, it actually worked pretty good, and I used a lot less coolant. So this time I broke out the big guns and measured with my gauge blocks. I apologize, the audio turned out terrible so I'm talking over myself here. The cut did come out pretty clean, but x-axis came in 6 thou under this time, and y-axis is now 10 thou over. Remember the pocket size was 30 by 40 millimeters. This really threw me, I mean how could things have gotten worse? Maybe I wasn't as careful as I thought I was. I decided to rerun the same exact G-code again, but in aluminum. I thought maybe there it might be closer to size and my router just couldn't handle the cutting forces in steel. But I was surprised to find that the pockets turned out exactly the same size. Those are the blocks I used to measure the width in the steel pocket. I mean, it's maybe a hair looser but can't be more than a few tenths based on feel between the steel and the aluminum pockets. And here are the blocks that gauge the pocket height. Again, pretty much the same feel. These pockets are the same size. Now the only thing I did different between the first pocket and these two is turn on backlash compensation. I thought I was doing good. So I sort of left it at that, but I'll be honest, it really bugged me. I went back the next day and checked everything again. I used a more rigid indicator setup and really went through it one step at a time in both X and Y. And as it turns out, I've got a screw loose in every sense of that expression. In particular, the screws on the Y axis uh, fixed bearing block. Two had backed themselves out and the other two were loose. Once tightened, the backlash on the Y axis was less than a thou, six tenths in fact. Y was a lot looser than X, but X was harder to get to. So I let X slide for now. Once I buttoned that up, I tried another cut. This time in a small vise, and I'll tell you, it really helped get that noise down. So here it is, fresh off the machine, 
All I did was stone the sharp edges and blow it clean with the air gun. Nominal dimensions of that island are 48 by 48 millimeters. Now 48 millimeters is 1.890. Hope nobody minds me stealing three tenths. First thing I did was check the mic with the one inch standard. Everything here is metric, but my brain still works in inches. You can see me wiggling that mic around because I'm really trying to crank down on it to get it to read the dimension I want it to read. Yeah, just kidding. The island is only four millimeters deep and it interferes with the head of the anvil and wiggling it seemed to help get the faces nice and square. X turns out to be 1.894, so fourth out oversized. Y is 1.891. One thou oversized. Again, keep in mind Y axis is the only one I snug the hardware up on. X looks like it needs it, but if you followed the build well, the X hardware isn't as easy to get to as the Y. But it's the same exact hardware on both axes, so I'm sure once that gets some needed attention, that four thou will probably drop to one like the Y axis. Knock on wood. So that's it. Looks like one thou is doable at least at this size, but I've got to keep an eye on the forces and vibrations involved when cutting steel. Nonetheless, still more work to do in tuning, and I have to buy some bomb-proof Loctite. So, to wrap this up and answer the question, yes, the router will cut steel. I'll probably take it easy on the steel until I get a suitable spindle, but in a pinch, looks like it'll work. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks again for watching.